In this video, I want to show you the mechanics of how we can write, compile, and run a Java application. Eclipse did a lot of this for us for free, and so I think it's important to understand what really is going on. It will also give you an appreciation for all the benefits you get of using Eclipse. So let's write a really simple Java application using Notepad. I'll just run Notepad from my Start menu, and you can use any text editor that you have available to you. Now in Eclipse, we only had to type one line of the actual code that we were executing because Eclipse provided everything else for us. But with a text editor, we are going to have to type in everything. This is going to be a class called Note. And so the first line we have to write is to declare that class. Again, I'm not going to explain every single thing we type because I really just want to show you the mechanics of compiling and running a Java application. So the first line is the class declaration, and that starts out with the word public space class, saying we're creating a class here, and the name of the class is note. Again, the naming convention for classes is they begin with a capital letter. The class will begin and end with a curly brace, and everything in between the curly brace is what's inside of the class. So let me push this down a bit. And inside of our class, we will have our method called main. So I will indent by four spaces. The number of spaces is really up to you. But to define our method, we say public space static space void space main. So that's our method. And don't worry, you'll understand what all those words mean a little later on. Inside of the main definition, we open a paren and we say string open and close square bracket space args close the paren space. And just like with the class, everything that goes inside the method will be between two curly braces. So let me push that one down a little bit and I'll indent it as well. Now we'll put our command, which I'll indent again, and all I want to do is simply print something to the screen. So that command will be system.out.println, and in parens, we put a quoted text string. I'll just say Java is easy. Close my quote and make sure my paren is closed, and then at the end of the statement, we put a semicolon. All right, so now we'll save our source file. Here is my documents directory underneath my username, and this is the workspace area we created for Eclipse earlier. I'm going to put this file in that same place. Now I'm going to keep it out of the way of the project that we're working on in Eclipse, so I'll just leave it right here, and I'm going to call it Note. Make sure it has a capital letter, just like the class definition does, and use the extension Java. I'll save that. And now that we have our source file created, we can compile it. To do that, I'll bring up a terminal. Now I need to move to the location where that file is. And for me, that's inside of my documents directory underneath Java. If I look for my files, I should see it right here. And you'll want to double check that Windows or whatever platform you're using didn't put an additional extension on it. In other words, sometimes when you save text files in an editor, it wants to tack on a TXT extension there. And for us, it needs to only have a Java extension. So now we compile it, and we do that by executing the Java C command for Java compiler, space, and then the name of the file we are compiling, which is note.java. Press enter, and you should just get your prompt back. If you didn't get anything else back, that means it compiled successfully. If we look inside that directory, we can see that now we have a file called note.class. So that's the compiled version of your Java file. We execute that by just saying Java, that runs the Java runtime environment, and then the name of the file, but you don't have to put the extension on it. Press enter, and it executed the file, printing out that string. This is the manual way of creating and running Java applications. 
If you've been following along with how we've done this in Eclipse, you can see how big of a time saver it is. So this is probably the last time you're going to see me do it this way. I want to take advantage of all of the productivity gains I get by using Eclipse, so that's what I'll be using from now on. But this should give you a nice understanding of what's happening behind the scenes.